Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and very recently the scientists discovered what seems to be the farthest star we've ever seen. Today we're going to be talking about the technique they used to discover the star and try to imagine how far away it really is using Space Engine. Welcome to What The Math. So we're going to start right here on Earth, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the actual research that was done by the scientists, but also talk about the distances involved here. So unofficially, this newly discovered star is known as Icarus, and it kind of uh, resembles another star we actually see from our own um, Earth. There's a star by the name of Rigel, and specifically Rigel A. Now, you can actually see it from Earth, and it, uh, it's a very, very bright, very, very massive star that's about 21 masses of our own Sun. And if you zoom into it, you obviously start seeing more of it. And at some point, uh, you'll actually see the star as a much larger object, possibly even the same size as our Sun is from Earth. Now, that's using a telescope, and that's using a telescope that's located on Earth. But if you were to look at a similar star far, far away, Unfortunately, you wouldn't really be able to see it. But it just so happens that there is actually a very interesting phenomenon that scientists uh, use nowadays called gravitational lensing. And using this gravitational lensing technique, they can actually see a star much clearer and actually see stars and objects and galaxies and even um, events that would not be otherwise visible that are happening not just millions of light years away, but billions of light years away. In other words, they can actually see things happening um, pretty much at the edge of the universe. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this. So this is actually what uh, the star that they discovered kind of looks like. This is, would be uh, an example of such star. This is a blue luminous supergiant. And the star that uh, we're talking about is actually called Icarus. Oh, okay, that's an official name. More official name is LS1, also known as Lens Star 1, also known as Max J1149. So this is kind of how they've seen this. They were looking at um, essentially a supernova in a galaxy far, 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 far away. We're talking about 9 billion light years away. I can't even actually see any galaxies this far. Um, so we're going to have to do something else. We're actually going to imagine how far away this is by escaping our own galaxy at a distance of 9 billion light years. And then we're going to take a look at Rigel yet again. So keep uh, your eyes on this uh, right here. This is distance in light years. And we're going to escape at a distance of 9 billion light years. It's going to be pretty far. If you uh, know anything about the size of the universe, it's just under 30 light, uh, a billion light years. We're going at a distance of about 9. And when they were looking at the event at this distance, uh, specifically they were actually looking at the supernova, something unusual happened. They witnessed a spark of light. And this spark of light just turned out to be a star. Now normally when you're using this unusual technique called gravitational lensing, okay, here we go, this is about 9 billion light years. So normally when you use this technique called gravitational lensing, and this is actually what uh, it involves, it involves looking at an object far away, but you have another really massive object right in front of you or right between you and the uh, object you're looking at. And so the actual starlight is bent and reflect or refracted um, onto the focus point, which is uh, essentially Earth. And by doing this, we can usually see objects that would not be otherwise visible. And normally this involves uh, a magnification of about 50 times. But in this particular case, we got really lucky. So first we're using, um, okay, so this is as far as we can get here. Let's maybe magnify this a little bit and increase the magnitude. Um, so usually you kind of see a supernova pretty easily. You see things like galactic structures, and you also see the actual galaxies themselves, but you don't see stars. Stars are too small to discern this distance. 50 times magnification is not enough to be able to tell individual stars apart uh, in a galaxy far, far away. 
And we were actually using um, a galactic cluster to try to magnify this. But it just so happened that inside of this galactic cluster, just at this moment, there was actually another star that passed right in front of the line of sight. In other words, another star that was not visible either passed in front and magnified the light from Icarus even more, giving it 2000 time magnification. And this is what really allowed us to see um, such a tiny object. Okay, it's a large star, but it's a tiny object when you think about distances involved um, at such incredible distances. So this is basically an impossible event and it's kind of very, very unlikely that we'll see any, this uh, once again anytime soon. But it basically allowed us to uh, detect the star at a distance of 9 billion light years and the star that's possibly long has turned into uh, a black hole or possibly a neutron star um, but basically it used to be there at this location in space at this period of time and uh, obviously this is not an event we'll be able to recreate very easily but we might be able to see some other things in the future, especially if we keep using this technique by basically placing an object between what we're looking at and our planet Earth like that. There we go. So this could pro potentially provide me with some kind of a magnification. And if an object is more massive, you get more magnification. And sometimes if you get really lucky, you'll actually get what's known as Einstein ring, which basically is uh, an event that occurs when you place these two uh, or these three objects in a straight line. And it creates this beautiful ring that you see on the screen. Um, so this is a pretty interesting sort of technique of looking at faraway objects and trying to magnify them. And hopefully one day we'll discover possibly even something else, possibly even an Earth-like planet. We have seen planets this way, but we haven't seen one where we could actually potentially study the atmosphere. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Let's return back to Rigel and take a look at it once again just so that you get an idea of what this actual star may have looked like at this distance of 9 billion light years. Now, in one of the future videos, we will actually talk a little bit more about the math and also the science behind the gravitational lensing. But for now, what you need to know is that this technique will definitely be improved over time. And one day we might even find something that we've never seen before. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.